Um, is my screen visible? Yes. Sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, one more uh, small request is, sir, try joining on time because uh, it will be disturbing. Uh, it will be disturbance for the others. Okay. So maximum I will start by nine only. Okay. Yeah. Small request. That's it. So once we will uh, briefly recap what we have discussed in our previous sessions, and we will continue with further topics. So. Coming to this FPGA, we have already discussed that FPGA stands for Field Programmable Gate Array. That is, we can uh, reprogram uh, again and again. We can reprogram our FPGA. So it is reprogrammable gate array. It is a programmable gate array. Whereas coming to ASICs, it is not easily programmable. We can reprogram, but it will take more and more steps to reprogram. Okay. So coming to this field FPGAs, these are very easily reprogrammable. Okay. And it is an integrated circuit designed to be configured by a customer or a designer after the manufacturing. Hence, field programmable FPGAs are used in a variety of applications because they can be reprogrammed to design the applications or functionality requirements after the manufacturing. This we have already discussed in our previous sessions. And this design flow we have already discussed. Coming to this design flow, we will be having design specification, behavioral description, RTL, functional verification, logical synthesis and gate level netlist. After getting this gate level netlist, we are going to generate the bitstream and we are going to dump, in the, dump it in it, uh, our FPGAs. Okay. Yeah. And this uh, applications, uh, uh, the difference between the ASIC and FPGA also we have discussed. And this is a simple uh, basic difference between the FPGA and ASIC. Examples of this ASICs are custom processors like GPUs, smartphones, gaming consoles and FPGA coming to this FPGA. If we want to prototype any new design, we are going to use this FPGA. This all, uh, this all we have discussed in our previous session. Okay. Yeah. Coming to the key features of FPGA, the key feature is programmability. I am uh, stressing more and more on this keyword programmability. This makes FPGA more and more uh, easy to use okay the programmability of this fpga is uh, i'm pressing more and more i'm focusing more on more and more about this programmability this key feature makes fpga more and more sophisticated for uh, for the design engineers who are doing any r d on any new prototype uh, this programmability key feature makes fpga very useful so unlike traditional asics application specific integrated circuits FPGAs can be programmed after they have been manufactured. So after manufacturing also, we can uh, use this FPGAs. So after manufacturing also, we can use this FPGAs. We can program this FPGAs. Okay. And one more key feature of this uh, FPGA is parallel processing. So FPGAs are very fast compared to ASICs. They are very fast. They are basically, they are, uh, they are, Parallel processors. So FPGA consists of an array of programmable logic blocks. We will discuss those. What are this uh, array of logic blocks? So there will be uh, the term called CLBs. So FPGA consists of CLBs, configuration logic blocks. So with the help of this FPGAs, we can achieve parallel processing, and which is an execute multiple operations simultaneously. So parallel processing is nothing but FPGAs can. Uh, handle multiple tasks parallelly so it can handle multiple data items it can uh, handle multiple widths of the data parallelly okay so with the help of this uh, clbs and uh, those are all uh, we are going to see the parallel processing how it is happening we will discuss that okay so remember this key features so programmability and parallel pro processing and flexibility so they can be reconfigured to perform different tasks making them highly versatile so the flexibility like we can reconfigure the FPGA how many times we want and so it makes it more versatile and high performance due to their parallel architecture FPGAs can achieve high performance than traditional CPU for certain applications. So the, uh, the data is processed parallelly so it will make the FPGA more high performance and nowadays in FPGAs we have DSP cores embedded in our FPGA 
so it will make all the dsp operations also very fast so we'll see what are the dsp cores and we have uh, block rams in our SP, fpga for storage of memory and for access of uh, data easily so these are all making fpga parallel processing easy okay so we will discuss one by one in our upcoming sessions so remember this flexibility high performance and reusability so they can be reused across different applications by reprogramming reducing costs and development times for the new products so these are the some of the key features of fpga now fpgas are used in four major domains one is asic and custom silicon and another is digital signal processing dsp cores we have in fpga that i will show uh, what are those dsp cores so because of that fpgas are also used in digital signal processing and the key feature we have discussed the, due to this parallel processing key feature also these fpgas are used in dsps digital processing and embedded microcontrollers and uh, physical air communication like ethernet communication ethernet data reception and ethernet protocols we use fpga and reconfigurable computing so these are uh, these are the not four it's actually five okay so these are the five major domains where fpga are used okay so up to here is it clear for everyone have you got a basic idea what is this fpga and what are we going to do with this fpga yes sir Now, so before going to uh, discuss more about FPGA, uh, what I wanted to do is uh, let's see uh, how this uh, programming, reprogramming, uh, is uh, achievable in FPGAs. So we will see some basic concepts like how can we program, uh, how can we reprogram a function. So have. taken few examples of reprogrammability so how we are going to achieve this so these are the technologies used in past in the fpgas so we will discuss this and we will see how uh, with the help of this how the technologies are evolved so these are the, all the past technologies what are going uh, what now i am going to discuss so directly jumping into the clbs and uh, io ports and all the things so to give a uh, general idea brief idea so i am going to discuss uh, what are all the old technologies which are uh, which are used in programming of a fpg okay now coming to uh, let's see a simple programming function so i think you have uh, you know this gate right and gate so this is a basic and gate and for this and gate this is the output and these are some pull up resistors connected to a high voltage logic one and these are my inputs a and b okay now now what happens uh, if this input is not connected to this uh, dot okay here there is no connection you can see here there is no connection okay so uh, can anyone tell me what is the output of this and gate in this case logic one means i am providing input as one so the and gate has all the inputs as one so what is output here there is no connection one um. yeah so in this case this if uh, this uh, circuit is called not program so this circuit is not programmed state okay the circuit is not programmed so what is the output we are getting one right yeah so after programming the circuit programming is nothing but uh, with the help of uh, this uh, we will add a metal contact between this layer so we will just uh, connect this dots okay so after connecting this potential links there will be no disconnecting okay so after programming so programming is nothing but we are connecting this dots so we will use some technology like uh, we, we are going to add some metal layer or something and we are going to connect this dots so the programmer what he will do he will connect the specific dots okay so for example he will connect this two dots and he will connect this this two dots okay so after programming 
he will uh, this uh, layer will be connected okay i'm not uh, specifying how these connections are happening internally so after programmer coding after programming this connection will be established and this connection is not removable or not removable it's a permanent connection so permanent means it cannot be removed okay so here there is no connection and here there is a connection okay so now so what is the output here here the input will be a supplied a and this here it will be b bar and all the other inputs are one so we are applying to a and gate a 1 1 and b bar okay if a is equal to 0 and we are applying b is equal to 0 that is b bar is equal to 1 right b bar is equal to 1 and other inputs we are applying 1 so what is the output y can anyone 0 If A is equal to 1, B bar, B is 1, B is 1 means B bar is equal to 0. What is the output? Which is equal to 0. And A is equal to 1 and B is equal to 0. That is B bar is equal to 1. Then what is the output? Y is equal to 1. So you can observe here the uh, circuit is being controlled with the help of the inputs A and B. So, if you are applying the input, if you are applying a particular input, your output is being programmed, right? So, basically the programmer is applying the inputs. After connecting these potential links, whenever you are applying any input, you are getting a particular input. So, this circuit will behave. Wait a minute. Sorry for that. So, this output we are getting depending upon our inputs. So, after programmer applying this, uh, programming this uh, circuit, these links will be established and they cannot be removed. These are permanent links. So, this circuit and this concept is it clear? What is happening? Is it clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, if a programmer want, uh, doesn't want this behavior, the, uh, like he want to, uh, so the disadvantage of this uh, circuit is he cannot uh, break this potential link. So, if a programmer after establishing establishing this potential link, he cannot uh, uh, disable this potential link. So, this is the disadvantage of this uh, type of programming function. So, what happened? So, after some years, uh, they have developed this fusible link technology okay so they have come up with this uh, certain technology called fusible link technology so in this fusible link technology the potential links are uh, replaced by this fuses okay so this type of fuses they have been replaced so the devices are made with with this fusible link technologies and after manufacturing the user uh, may program like for example if we want uh, this fuse is uh, our household fuses so they will apply the voltage greater than the uh, uh, sorry the current greater than the fuse current so that fuse uh, connection will be removed so for example uh, here they want to re uh, remove this fuse so they will apply more current so this uh, connection will be removed so there will be no connection between this and if they want this connection they will not apply more current at this point so this fuse will be there and here if they want to remove this link they will apply more current so for example in this case if we want to remove this connection and this connection we can remove by applying more current so this is in this case in fusible technology the programmer after getting the device he will uh, program the device by applying more uh, currents at the specific fuses okay so what happens now uh, we have removed this connection. So, A has been removed and here we are getting A bar and B bar is removed and we are getting B. So, to the AND gate, we are applying A bar and B and this is our output. 
So depending upon the inputs A bar and B, our output is being changed. Is this clear? Is this fusible link technology clear? Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. So this is how we are going to program. So uh, for example, uh, we want our output to be 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. This pattern we want at the output. So what user will do? He will uh, give the input pattern A bar and B accordingly so that he can get the output pattern 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. So like this, he will program the uh, inputs to be given certainly so that at output he can get the particular uh, pattern okay so this is nothing but the programming that's it okay so for say suppose if we want at the output 3 that is 101 so 101 pattern he want so he, he will give a particular inputs a bar and b so he will give a particular inputs a bar and b so that at the output he can get a bit pattern of 101 that is the number 3 he can get so using this fusible technology link technology he can program uh, whatever so he should first decide whether which fuse connection should be present and which fuse connection should be removed or else he can uh, maintain all the fuses but at the output he will only get one so he can uh, manage and he can remove the unnecessary fuses and he can program the device and get the particular bit pattern or particular information he can reprogram it again and again okay with this fusible link technology is it clear uh, so how that gate will be uh, designed over there Which gate? This one. so uh, this feasible we got it but these gates and all other structures how they are designed in fpg uh, you are talking about this gate and gate yeah, yeah these gates and gate not gate and other other structures also yeah uh, like uh, we have cmos mos technology right so with the help uh -huh, of yeah. transistors we are going to build those all gates okay so okay. Th this technology uh, this is not at present this is the past technology what i am talking about Okay. Yeah. So oh, okay. yeah, that's what I'm saying. So I'm basically building this technology. So this is the uh, past technology which uh, FPGAs will consist of. Okay. 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 Yeah. So uh, the disadvantage of this fusible link is we cannot uh, after removing the connection we cannot again establish the connection. So uh, we cannot use this fusible link technology. Uh, because we cannot again re-establish this connection. Once the connection is caught, it's caught. Okay. Now. Coming to this anti-fuse technology, it is uh, opposite to this fusible technology. Here we are removing the fuse connection, and here in this anti-fuse technology, we are establishing the we are establishing the connection like this. Here in the diagram you can see so instead of removing the fuse we are establishing a connection it is like a uh, this uh, potential link it is like a potential link okay same same example with same explanation okay. next so these were the past technologies which fpgas were used to build not FPGAs, actually they were uh, trying to uh, build a programmable function that can be reprogrammed again and again. So the designers uh, uh, tried to build uh, this programmable devices. So afterwards, uh, uh, CPLDs and SPLDs came into picture and after that FPGAs uh, came into picture. Okay, So we'll discuss one by one uh, clearly and slowly about that. So these were uh, just an ideas to implement the programming functions okay which designers used so this this is to give a basic idea how programmability uh, will work okay yeah so i think this is uh, enough for today's session so yeah 
if you are having any doubts you can ask me or else we can end the session thank you thank you so much